Hello everyone, welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. Today I have the number one nutrition expert in all of MMA. This man right here, if you don't know him, he's the genius behind all the weight cuts of the UFC. He he basically does, I think, half the champions and countless UFC fighters. He does all, almost all my, my pro fighters. He's the man when it comes to losing weight, cutting weight, getting shredded, and still performing uh, at your best. So I want to introduce George, George Lockhart the number one nutrition expert. And for those of you who don't know him, sit tight. You're about to hear some incredible uh, uh, lessons on nutrition, th things you haven't heard before. The questions I have for him today are all your questions. We were supposed to do this video a month ago. I messed up the video. My apologies. So I still have all your questions. I, I, I remember all your questions. I noted them down. And uh, I haven't seen George in a month. So that's why this video is late. He's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. And uh, I have all your questions, but I don't remember who... The names of the people who posted them okay so i was just going to be giving you uh the straight up questions george has been very generous with his time he's going to give us about roughly 30 minutes okay so we're going to get it rolling right away and get the most out of him as possible first question you guys asked is how to <coughs> deal with sugar cravings that, is, that that's a huge one for me too so i got a sweet tooth for all of you out there with a sweet tooth george what do they do uh, it's funny man it's uh <clears throat> kind of like a catch-22 because uh, uh, sugar kind of craves sugar. You know, the more sugar you eat, the more sugar you're going to want. A lot of times when you're not even hungry, you might taste something like a, like a little piece of a candy, uh, like a white cracker, white bread, and you end up like, man, I want more. You have that first roll at the dinner table. They bring you that bread for some uh, some restaurants, and you start eating it, and you're like, man, I want more. It, it, it craves more. It's like the never-ending thirst. Um one way to, to actually stop once you get there, like once you get past the cravings, once you kind of clear your system of, of eating these foods a lot, you're not going to crave them as much. Uh, but to get to that point, a couple of things you can do is uh, add cinnamon to your to your diet. One thing I'll give fighters that are really hungry and are having sugar cravings is I'll give them about a liter of water. I'll put about a teaspoon um, up to a tablespoon of cinnamon and uh, a tablespoon of psyllium husk. Psyllium husk makes the stomach expand. It's the type of fiber that makes the stomach expand. And uh, the cinnamon, it affects your insulin levels. Insulin is basically the hormone that my body produces once I eat sugar. It, uh, it spikes, and it basically stores things in my body. Uh, I want to keep that flat line because once it goes down, it sends a signal to my body saying, hey, I need high sugary foods, which gives you that craving. So if I'm able to flat line it, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really help those cravings. Get past the two to three days. Some people, they go cold turkey. They stop eating anything with sugar. I'm not saying that. It's not that you don't ever need sugar. There are times <clears throat> that you need sugar, you know, post-workout and things like that. But to answer your question, cinnamon, psyllium husk, and try and stay away from the sugar. I started doing the cinnamon, and it really lowered my, my sugar craving. I was putting, I was breaking off a cinnamon stick, putting it in hot water. Yes. And I would just sip on it. And it was my morning uh, ritual, and I would do it also at night. Because at night after workout, I feel like I crave so much sugar. I'll have a piece of fruit or whatnot, but then I want more sugar. I just have that hot water, throw in a, a cinnamon stick, and it really cut down my cravings and uh, just had it under control. But you're right. When I eat when I eat sweet foods, I'm always wanting more and more sweet foods. Yes. It's like I, the detox period <laughs> you have to go through. So next question from you guys was, what is the best thing you can eat for energy before a workout? Um it's funny because there's a common misconception that, you know, like our body's primary source of fuel is, is carbohydrates. Um, it's not. Our body's primary source of fuel is, is fat when we're in an aerobic state. That's what my body will use when uh, when my muscles have oxygen. You know, me and me and Faraz here, we're sitting here, we're, we're talking, we're able to breathe, our muscles are able to get oxygen, oxygenating the muscles. So we're burning a majority of fat. There's always a mixture. Um, what I need to do is unlock certain... Um, energy i guess compartments um when i do something anaerobic like you're talking about a, a workout um I, i'm going to burn carbohydrates as a primary source of fuel well i need to unlock that because it's it's stored and it's stored as glycogen how do i release that glycogen um I, I take in protein protein releases a hormone called glucagon that tells my body to to use free uh free fatty acids and stored glycogen so it kind of opens that up tells my body to use energy that I have stored. Um, I basically use this with uh, uh, caffeine. Like caffeine, a lot of people have a, you know, when you say it, it's like, oh, that's bad for you. Uh, NSCA, they've done a lot of studies and they've shown that athletics, um, can, athletic performance can be improved 
uh, from anywhere from two to six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of lean muscle mass. Now this is a huge, this is like a really, I mean, that's, a, that's a big span. Um, so, you know, you want to look at your ins or, uh, your uh, caffeine sensitivity. If you if you can't sleep at night, then you're probably more sensitive to the caffeine. You probably want to draw back. Sleep's a little bit more important than, than working out. A lot of people don't look at that. Um, but, you know, kind of kind of kind of went off on a on a tangent there, but um, hopefully so, answered your question. So, boys, caffeine is good. See how sensitive you are. Yeah, absolutely. How do you feel about protein shakes? Um, protein shakes, like I just said, you know, like to to promote energy, I want to take protein to release that glucagon. Uh, people, they for some reason think that uh, when they work out, they need to take a protein shake afterwards. When you're working out, when you're anaerobic, your body's primary source of fuel is carbohydrates. Um, your fuel is carbohydrates. It's like a car. A car is uh, it's like putting you know gas in your oil pan and putting uh, oil in your gas tank. You know, you just use carbohydrates and you're like, I need to take protein. If your body's using protein, you're doing something seriously wrong because the only way that your body will break down protein is is if you have no other source of fuel out there, fat or, or carbohydrates. If you're in a ketosis state, your body you know, can start breaking down that protein. Um, it's not healthy um, and um, it's, it's definitely not something that you want to be doing. Protein shakes, people think like, I'm going to add muscle. The reason they have this misconception is that a lot of bodybuilders, they want to stay as lean as possible and, um, you know, continue to eat and grow. So the way that I do that, like, well, how do I grow without getting, you know, getting too fat? What I want to do is I want to over overdo the protein. If I overdo the protein, my body through something called glyconeogenesis will take excess amounts of protein and turn it into glycogen. Now, this isn't the way that I want my body to work. You know, it's it's going to keep my 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 metabolism super high. The thermogenic effects are going to be great. Um, I'm going to stay lean. Uh, problem is, is like if you ask me to go and fight for five rounds, go run half a mile, or just have like plain straight up energy, um, it's not conducive to that uh, because that's not the way my body is designed. Um, <clears throat> but it's great for bodybuilding. And when you read the body bag uh, magazines, what do they tell you? Protein, 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 protein. So that's where that misconception comes. Usually, want to take protein before you work out, not after you work out, and you sure as heck don't want to be taking it all day long. So, if your body's using protein as a primary source for MMA, it's the wrong. It's the wrong. Yeah, if your if your body's using it as a primary source in MMA, definitely. you don't have enough carbs. In your yeah, system. you need you need carbs when you're doing uh, any kind of MMA whatsoever. Uh, your body is using carbs as a primary source. Of I remember you had us taking honey before practice, 15 minutes before practice, and I, and I always liked that because I felt like it gave me that. Gave me that initial boost to get that momentum going for my workout, like just a, a tablespoon of honey. What we're doing? Yeah, that's a. It's just funny. It's something called a theory of perception. You know, your body has certain you know, triggers. I always talk about negative feedback signals. Um, when fighters are cutting weight, when their blood thins out, all your body knows is that your blood's thinning out. It doesn't know that you have to make weight or anything like that. Uh, when um, I use this example a lot, like I say, your body doesn't have a brain. And uh, a lot of people are like, hey, you know, dumbass, it's on top of my <laughs> neck, you know. But I'm like, the truth is, is your body only knows signals. Uh, signal being like, why do you hold on to body fat? Uh, body doesn't know that you can go to the grocery store anytime that you want. So it, it's like, I got to hold on to that fat uh, for storage. Um, and that's and that's why your body holds on to that fat. It doesn't know, like, man, anytime I get hungry, I can go to the restaurant. I can order some downstairs. It doesn't know that. All it knows is I need to hold on to stuff because he's not eating consistently. Most Americans, most people have the sumo wrestler diet. They eat twice a day. They eat once in the morning. They eat once at night. That's what sumo wrestlers do. They start themselves all night long, wake up in the morning, they eat. Their body holds on to everything. Why? Because it's it doesn't know when it's going to eat again. Um, in terms of um, water, your body doesn't know, like for somebody trying to make weight, your body doesn't know, like, oh, wait a minute, you know, if I make weight, then he's going to drink water. All it knows is the blood's thinned out. This is something designed for, you know, if you're in the desert and you start sweating profusely, your blood plasma thins and your brain, it sends a signal to your brain. Your brain's like, whoa, we're going to sweat out. So it sends vast suppression and your body doesn't sweat and you don't, you don't pee. It sends, it sends uh, urine back into the kidneys. The body has a mechanism to lock on. A hundred percent. The cool thing is, is if I learn how to override this, right? If I learn how to, ah, if I, how do I got to thicken the blood plasma? I keep the body cold. That overrides that system. How do I give the body energy? Well, I take in a little bit of honey tricks the body because when my when I taste that the viscosity and the sweetness it sends a signal to my brain 
hey, he's got a full amount of uh, glycogen, so I'm able to so spend. It, it, it's exactly. I'm able to spend. I'm able to, to to work harder. People think, oh, don't you know? It's calories in, calories out type thing. Sometimes giving your body good calories right before a workout will will release energy, and you'll have a much more intense workout. And you'll burn more, and you'll and you'll you'll boost your metabolism, and you'll have a better workout. So, I always thought it was crazy for guys who limit their calories right before going to training. Oh, I'm not gonna eat too much. You know, they have just like a little biter. It's hard to practice on an empty stomach. It's hard right. to practice for real. You know, you, you gotta you gotta get ready for your 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 fights. You gotta be you know get in gear. You need that energy, and I think I rather eat a little bit more and train more than eat less and keep my workouts really short. You know, maybe close to the end, closer to competition, you might wanna. Keep your workouts short and your meals short, but in in practice, I mean, when you're when you're training, you need that food, you need that fuel. Without the fuel, I, I think performance really suffers. Oh, 100 percent. You gotta. <clears throat> this is one analogy I use. I think it would really help out with MMA fighters. When you're getting ready for a fight, it's like a it's like a race, right? You're getting ready for a, a race, and I, I always tell people, it's like, okay, so your car, you're gonna fuel up the car less, you're gonna drive the car more because you're getting ready for a fight, and you're gonna expect performance to increase. No way, guys. No, it's not no. going to happen. So what do I do? I put a bigger engine in the car. So you put yeah. a bigger engine in the car. Performance increases, but also the amount of fuel that I'm using increases, so I burn fat more proficiently. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do, and that's you know let most people like take away, take away, take away. Performance goes down. Engine gets smaller. Performance decreases. Yeah. So next one is going vegan and becoming deficient. One, we had one question. One one subscriber wanted to know if I go vegan. Am I gonna become deficient uh, and do MMA? Like he's he's gonna be doing MMA, training hard, right? On a vegan diet. Uh, I've worked with a lot of vegans, vegetarians. Uh, you know, Aaron Simpson. You you know, like a lot of guys, you wouldn't expect. Um, or your stereotypical like vegetarian, you would say like, oh, you know, like because like bodybuilding has said such a like a big impact on on people. Like, oh, if you don't eat meat, you can't have muscles. And that's that's not necessarily the case. But if I do take out something, there definitely is going to be a deficiency in in um, certain uh, vitamins, minerals, and things of that nature. Uh, vitamin B um, is definitely going to be um, B twelve, B six. But you want to get a like a B complex in through. Uh, um, in your diet, you know, one way to take it is through uh, supplementation. And that's the whole point of supplementation. A lot of people mess that up, you know, like they, they, they're like, hey, George, what do I need to take to get lean? What do I, you know, supplement means to supplement your diet. If you're eating crap, you're supplementing crap. Um, but if you're eating everything right and you're like, okay, there is a deficiency in my actual diet, I'm going to supplement it with X, Y, and Z. If you're a vegan, I would supplement with a, with a B vitamin or you will have deficiencies in that. If you're, if you're, one thing was huge for me is, is lowering the amount of red meat. I know. I know we need some red meat, but how much red meat do you need in, oh. a, week, in a week? I athlete, somebody who trains six days a week, somebody who's very serious about training. Right. How much red meat oh. is necessary? Because the the B twelve is, you, you you could be, if you don't eat any meat, you yeah. could be lacking in, in B vitamin. One hundred percent. So we need B vitamin. Yeah. How much red meat is the right amount? So honestly, like, and that's going to be different between each person, but. Um, like like chicken and fish and things like that, it takes about six hours for your body to digest. For steak, red meat, man, it could take it could take ten hours for your body to digest. It can take actually longer than that. But if it's taking that long for my body to break stuff down um, and, and use for energy, I mean, just think of it. Let's say I'm getting ready to go practice, go train. Ten percent of your metabolism comes from breaking foods down. So while my body is is sitting there digesting, like I'm like, oh yeah, coach, I had a great practice. It's impossible to have 100% practice. Why? Because 10% of your blood and everything is going to that stomach to digest your body. It's your body trying to do two things at once. It's very difficult. Um, and mm -hmm. like I said, it's impossible. You want to have like an empty stomach. You don't want to be trying to digest and stuff. A lot of the red meat, a lot of fighters that I've worked with you, they, uh, a lot of your coaches, they'll have uh, like steaks on the weekend, like on a, on a day off. Like, hey, man, they don't have to sit around and have to digest all this stuff. So like a day off, I'd say like once a week. Uh, is more than enough. You know, one, having a steak once a week is, is more than enough. Lean. You just saved the lives of a lot of cows. <laughs> <laughs> Poor chickens out there are like crap. I was eating red meat twice a day every day until I, he got me down to one and two. <laughs> and I feel much better. Energy level skyrocket. That's awesome. Feeling so much better. Red meat takes it out of you. It does. It does man. You know, I would wake up, I would have a lot of red meat at night. I would wake up tired the next day. Yeah. I just slept eight hours, ten your, hours. Your body why, why am I tired? Working overtime. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this next subscriber wanted to know, he's going from 12% to 8% body fat. He uh, wants to know, is he going to lose power and speed? 
Is, the, is, is his power, his speed, is his strength going to go down if he loses 4% body fat? Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. <clears throat> Me and you, we've talked about this a lot. Like, you yeah. remember the whole byproduct thing? Um, and I, I believe it's true. Like, today we uh, we, we just got done with the weigh-ins. And, you know, 90% of the fighters look like they're getting ready for a bodybuilding competition. You know, they're ripped. But if you ask one of them, you know, what's your goal? None of their goals was like, dude, I want a six-pack. I want an eight-pack. I want – they're like, I want to perform at 100%. Uh, I want to be a, a I want to be a workhorse. I want to have the strongest kicks, the best takedowns, you know, the the fastest punches, and that right there created the body that that they have, you know. Um, and you 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 explained this very well. You were you were saying that um, to do things like this, it, it, it can't be um, something that you strive to do. You can't be like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna lift weights. If you don't like lifting weights, if you you know like I'm gonna get up and run. If you don't like running. Find something that you like to do. If you like playing basketball, then that's going to help you get in, you know, get in shape. It's going to help you lean out. Um, to answer your question, if you're worried about the power dropping, concentrate more on increasing your power and increasing your strength, and you will lean out. It's just, it's just. Don't focus on going from 12 to 8. Forget about that. Lift weights, do things that increase your power, and tighten up your diet, and let let the twelve percent dropping to eight percent. Let that be a byproduct of what you're doing. So if you if you make your goal to go from twelve to eight, I think you can lose power. Are you doing long distance jogs and and lowering your calories? Is that how you got to eight percent, or are you doing plyometrics? You know, lots of wrestling, lots of jujitsu, lots of boxing, pad work, bag work. You know, are, are you doing your martial arts? You will get stronger if you make the goal training and dieting properly. And let that weight take care of itself. But some fighters, they train to make weight, while other fighters train for their fight. And making weight is kind of like a byproduct because they ate well. So the weight took care of itself. But some fighters are so obsessed, they come in and they're like, I got to do these 10 things today to lose the weight. It's like, no, let's do our training. Right. And our training will break down the foods you ate and just tighten up your diet a little bit. But we got to focus on training for fights. We can't focus on the scale so much the scale has to take care of itself from with our training so i don't like my guys to supplement too much with long distance runs and things like that unless unless the weight is really an issue but it's got to be a byproduct making weight's got to be a byproduct of that hard work yeah. so yeah that's that's a, i think i think it's a really good concept to adopt um next one the most common error people make in their diet that was another question that one of our subscribers have what's the most common thing you see in athletes Messing up their diet. Oh, athletes! Man, there's, <laughs> there's too many. You're just <laughs> overloaded his brain. <laughs> just He's like just brain. overloaded his brain. Um, What's number one? Number one. Um, it's got to be water, no? Water would be water would be a huge. That's the number one tip that I would tell people. You know, water. It's it's not sexy. You know, everybody. It's like <laughs> you tell them to drink more water, and they're like, "Oh, come on, that's seriously. Look, what's the secret? It's like a magic trick." You know, like when you see it, you're like, that is amazing. How do you do it? And then they show you how to do it, and everybody's like, oh, come on, that's stupid. Well, that's, that's how you do it. Um, one of the biggest ones I would say would be eliminating calories. Um, the calories in, calories out uh, theory. Um, a lot of people, they're like, okay, I got I to gotta cut back. And um, what they do is they, they eat um, when, they're, when they're hungry. For, for, for example, they're like, I want to lose weight and I'm motivated and I got a goal and I'm driven and this is what I'm going to do. So they're, they're like, I'm not hungry and I'm not going to eat, right? And you, you're, you're not going to eat and then you don't eat, then you don't eat, then you don't eat. And all of a sudden, all your hormones, your, your, your ghrelin, everything else, it, it takes over and you're starving. You get to the house, you're like nachos and, and <laughs> sandwiches and pizza and all, just everything under the sun. You're no longer in control of your hunger. Uh, when we work with people, we want to say, okay, are you, are you hungry? No, that's the perfect time to eat. You want to eat when you're not hungry. Why? Because you're now in control of your hunger. You're not only in control of how much you eat, but you're in control of what you eat. If you're not really hungry, you're like, you know, I, I could have squash for, you know, or, or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't care because I'm not really, um, so stay ahead of the hunger. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. A lot of people don't do, they try and starve themselves to, uh, to get to their goal. They want quick, fast, and in a hurry. You should never be hungry, right? You should never be you hungry. You should never be hungry. The second you're hungry, you're not feeding the beast. You got to feed that machine all day long, little increments, but you should never be starving. Then, then you're going to, you're going to, your, your, your instincts are, your instincts, Dude. your instincts are going to kick in. You you're going to turn into an animal and you're going to just, you're going to storm the fridge. You're going to storm the 
It happens to all of us. All right? of us, right? You can but never be hungry. It's the, the worst that's idea. That's the kicker, man. You gotta, you know, like I was telling people, you gotta remove the struggle instead of fight the struggle. You know, yeah, yeah. That's, you're not gonna win key. that. That's key. Keep hunger at bay at all times. How many times a day should somebody eat? Like roughly? Honestly, like with our program, you'll have people eat nine or ten times a day. Now, that's what he does. That's know. what he does, and it's it, the guys are not hungry. They're losing weight. Yeah, they're yeah. cutting the weight, and they're not hungry. I'm like, are you hungry? Not hungry at all. They don't complain. The weight. Your method <laughs> is the best, man. Your method is. It's crazy. Okay, next, fat burners, good or bad? One of the subscribers wanted to know fat burners. Right. Uh, fat burners, uh, it's, it works one of two ways. It's either going to increase uh, your overall core temperature by increasing your heart rate. That's where you know, a lot of people get the jitters. Or it's going to help decrease your, your appetite. Either way, you know, you, you're not going to be hungry. You might be like jittering jack. You know, like, oh, my God, I can't eat. Why? Because you got so much jitters and, and uh, anxiety. It's not even funny. Uh, and initially, it'll work. But just like everything else in life, you know, whether it be alcohol, whether it be uh, uh, ibuprofen, um, uh, leptin, insulin, whatever, your body becomes resistant to everything. Um, you know, first time you drink a, a beer, you're like, wow, this feels great. Next thing you know, it takes two. Or ibuprofen, you take you take one, you know, and the next time you need to take two and vice versa. With a fat burner, unfortunately, the way it works, if you keep taking it and you just you keep up in the ante, you're going to have a dang heart attack. Um, problem is, is once you do become resistant to it, when you start taking it, you're almost taking it just to feel normal. It's like it's like uh, coffee. A lot of people drink like three pots of coffee. They used to drink a, a cup of coffee and they're like, oh, I feel good. Now it takes three pots. Why? Because your body's become uh, resistant to that. So in terms of, of, of actually trying to take something to actually do the work for you, um, I say no. There's no shortcuts when it comes to this. And I, like I said, it's not sexy. It's not. It's not glamorous. It's not the magic trick. When I say you gotta, you gotta do the hard work. There are tips. There are tricks. There are things that you can do. But there are no shortcuts. Um, and, and and the truth is, is the the best way to uh, to burn fat is through nutrition, dieting, um, and and working out. Keep the fat burners on the shelf. How? Oh, oh, sorry. No, we did that one. When to cut water before a weigh in? Oh. When do you cut the water? Um, What's a good time? If they uh, if they if they weigh in um, like today, when they weigh in on uh, Saturday, I cut water. Um, <laughs> we're gonna pretend today's Friday because this whole week threw me off. Like a fight on Sunday. Who does fights that? Fights on Sunday this weekend. So let's <laughs> pretend we're for Friday and tomorrow Saturday. Tomorrow Saturday, I'll, I'll cut the I'll cut the water on Wednesday. The reason being, like when I say cut water, a lot of people are like, wait a minute, that's way early. Um, when I say cut water, it's a lot different than what other people mean cut water. That doesn't mean cut water completely. What's going to happen is we're going to do what's called a water load. A lot of people have heard of a water load. Um, not everybody does it proficiently, but what it does is it, it's basically overloading my body and trying to, like, remember I told you about those negative feedback signals. Your body's like, oh, why do I hold on to fat? Why does your body hold on to water? Um, when I have an excess amount of water, my body has certain hormones that it's got to either suppress um, it keeps them down. It's in aldosterone and, and vasopressin. Those are dealt with sodium and, and water. But um, I overload them, and the body's like, whoa, we need to get rid of this all this excess water. And there's a lot more that goes into it than that, but your body starts releasing, 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 releasing. Now, Wednesday comes around. If I'm weighing in on Friday, I need to, I need to drink a whole bunch under a specific amount of time. Uh, usually it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. I actually have them overload, so they're almost bloated, like they're swishy swashy. That's the only time I'll have them do this. The reason being is because it's almost like my body will push out all the remaining like sodium and electrolytes. It's not good for an average person, but if you're trying to cut water and uh, cut that weight, it's great. Now after after a specific amount of time, I'm only going to drink ice cold water, and I'm only going to drink when I'm thirsty. A lot of people have a lot of confusion with this. They're like, well, well how much is that? <laughs> well, uh, are you thirsty? Yes. Then drink. Uh, are you not thirsty? No. Then small don't sips. Drink. Yeah. Small sips. Small sips. But when you're not thirsty, stop drinking. You know? Um, and it's got to be ice cold. People are like, well, why it's got to be ice cold? Because that, that keeps your blood thick. Once my blood's thick, it keeps vasopressin, trying to keep one of those negative feedback signals down. Uh, so that vasopressin stays, stays down. And I'm basically, for the next two days, trying to take out or uh, release more water than I'm taking in. But at no point am I ever just completely cutting out the water, except right before I weigh in. Obviously, we have to we have to make the weight. We cut the weight, and then uh, after that, nothing goes in our mouths uh, until we until we make weight. 
Next question I got for you was one of the subscribers wanted to know, and this question I get it a lot, same day weigh-ins. Amateur fighters have to weigh in the same day. So a lot of times the weigh-ins are like 11 a.m. and then they're fighting at 7 p.m. and later. So they got like eight hours. Some of them have a little late, longer, like 10 hours. How right. much weight is safe to cut on the same day? Um, I wouldn't go anything more than five pounds. And the reason I say five pounds is because your body can naturally fluctuate five pounds overnight. You sleep. So if you time everything correctly, you can you can do five pounds um, and the, the day of. Um, that, that, that right there is saying that you have adequate amount of time and you actually have to know how to reload. You know, I was working with the Ohio State wrestling team and uh, a lot of them would, uh, would cut three, four, five, um, you know, up six, seven pounds and they weigh in an hour afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, people are like, well, they can do that. The only difference is, is your, your blood-brain barrier, it takes a little bit longer for your body to hydrate. Uh, when wrestling, they're not taking headshots, so um, there, there's not as much need for protective, uh, my head to be protected, brain tissue, and things of that nature. So, you know, just because you're able to do something in wrestling, it's not necessarily the best case when it comes to If you're that. dehydrated and there's blows to the head, you have more of a chance of getting knocked out. So knocked out. It's really damage. important. Well, if you're in a combat sport where blows to the head are allowed, you absolutely must be hydrated. 100%. Um, next question we got for you is uh cheat meals what is the right way one of our members wanted to know what is the right way to do a cheat meal i guess what he means by the right way is uh how can you have your cheat meals without getting fat right so how there, often there actually is a there is you know like now this is funny because out of everything that i say today people will take like the pieces that you're like, bro, you, you didn't get anything else out of that. You're like, dude, he said I could have a cheat meal. And I think that's why cheat meals become such a um, – first off, there's a couple things. I'm going to probably go off on like a million different tangents. But number one, um, dieting is like finances, okay? <laughs> if I save money all week long and you go to the bar and you're like, hey, round's on me, you just lost everything you saved for all week. It was, took you less than an hour, Right. People, they will be on my diet for five days and they'll be like, hey, man, when do I get a cheat meal? <laughs> You're like, are you kidding me? Like, wow, five days. Um, to, to even think, be thinking about a cheat meal, you need to be looking about, you know, you're, we're talking at least a minimum of three weeks. Really? At least three weeks. Wow. Um, reason being is what happens is now your body starts leaning out. Certain uh, certain hormones start shifting. There's uh, your hormone leptin. Leptin is uh, basically the hormone that, that tells you that you're full. Okay, uh, your body starts, I guess, it becomes more resistant to it as you diet. Your body starts to go, oh my God, I'm hungry all the time. Um, cortisol starts increasing. If you have a cheat meal, what happens is you your cortisol will go way up, your leptin will go down. Now, after about six to seven hours, your cortisol will drop after that as, as well. So um, your leptin, like your resistance goes down, you'll be more sensitive to the leptin, you'll feel fuller. So it does, it helps adjust hormones in the body. Now, when it comes to cheat meals, like what do I have for a cheat meal? And this is crazy, but you're going to have whatever you want, your body wants. Simple rules. It can't be fried. It's got to be all natural, nothing processed, nothing fizzy, nothing cheat carbonated. Meal, nothing processed? Nothing processed. No pizza for cheat no meal? No pizza. No oh, pizza. What's the cheat meal then? So you can have... Salad. <laughs> you can have a salad. You know, if, you, if you're craving a salad, there's hey, no, something wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> listen, so you guys can have you know, like mashed potatoes, like regular potatoes. You can have like, baked potatoes. Um, you, you know, it's kind of like my favorite food. You can obviously tell. Uh, rice, beans. Um, you can have avocado, steak. You can have any steak you want. You can have any chicken you want, any fish you want. Um, Where's the cheating? Meh. Well, the cheating is is in the quantities. Like you can wake up and say, you know what, I want I want to have a egg and steaks uh, omelet, you know, with avocado. And it, it's funny because people when they when they consider like cheating, it's like um, it's like your body's doing everything right to even consider a, a, a cheat meal. You're like, you know what, my body's doing everything right, and your body's a vehicle. Let's say your body's a Lamborghini, you know. And it's like you're driving around in your Lamborghini, and you're like, man, this thing is driving nice. You know what, I'm gonna put. Bottom grade fuel in it. You know what I'm saying? That sounds like a well, good idea. I have two to three cheat meals a week. Yeah. Now, how come I'm so lean and mean? So I defy <laughs> Georgia's science. See that? I, I got George's nothing. science cannot explain 
I got nothing. Why I'm so low in body fat <laughs> and I have two to three cheat meals a week. This is so you're telling me that it's not okay to have cake, pizza, burgers. Yesterday I had a burger and wings mm. and I had two bags of chips. I had what else did I have? Is this, uh, this is a meal? Yes. Or a cheat day. That was a cheat day. I was traveling. I was a cheat day. Yeah, I, was traveling. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I like to die when I there's nothing healthy to eat anyway. hundred percent. I do that two to three times a week, and that's not good. Okay, so here's here's the case. Listen, people. The rest of the time, though, just just to be fair, the rest of the time I'm eating fruits, vegetables, lentils, and quinoa. Like right. a lot, every day, I eat quinoa two to three times a day. Nice. Honey, I'll have honey when I, before training and stuff. Some seeds, not too much. Lots of vegetables, lots of fruit. Maybe out of fifty meals a week, you know, forty of them will be. No, no, no. 45 will be fruits, vegetables, quinoa. So I'm going to go back to the analogy of finances. There's, you got different types of people, right? Um, if somebody wants to become a millionaire, right, and they're like, we're going to use the millionaire as somebody that is shredded. They're <laughs> like, I want three cheat meals a, a week. You're like, you're not going to become a millionaire by spending a lot of money throughout the way. You can you can live, you know, work your butt off and live a decent lifestyle and still spend decent amount of money on nice cars or whatever, but you're never going to become a millionaire. You got to be crazy straight. So if I want to be shredded, you know what I'm saying? This is this is the uh, this is the route that I that I got to go. Then you got other people. You got to got to look at it like, okay, um, I'm saving money and I'm never going to spend it. So you got a millionaire. He's a millionaire. He's like, I'm saving every dime, every penny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He doesn't do anything. And and this is the person that like they eat a cake or like a like a little piece of cake and they're like, oh my god, I'm off my oh my god, you know. Yeah. And it like it destroys them. Uh, that that's not life. You know what I mean? If you save money, you got to spend it. So if you're saving, let's say you're eating a majority of the time, like you say, like you're eating a majority of the time when you go and. You're like, this is money I've saved. When you have that cake in front of you, the best thing to do is enjoy it. The worst thing you could possibly do is sit there and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I ate that cake. There's a lot of psychology to it. You're going to create a more of a struggle. And guess what you want to do? You know what the, the number one thing people do? This is a funny thing. They'll say, wait, I, I cheated. Well, since I cheated, might as well really cheat. So they binge. That's me. Think of it like finances. You buy something slightly out of your budget. You're like, you know what, dude? Slightly over budget. Might as well just go on a crazy debt, you know? Like, I'm going to go buy a Lamborghini now, you know? Um, it's insane. You know what I tell myself? I eat the burger. I enjoy it. And I tell myself, tomorrow I'm going to burn the hell out of this burger. <laughs> I'm not going to let it turn to fat. That's what I tell myself. I'm going to turn it to energy. I'm going to do five five-minute rounds. And then I'll be done. And I'll be like, oh, I ate that burger. I'm going to do another three five-minute rounds. And I'll, I'll just I'll, – I'll, I'll pay my debt. I'll pay my debt. And I have, if, you, if you have that kind of will, that you can enjoy the cake. You're like, so what? Tomorrow I'll just destroy that cake. It's not going to survive in my system. It will be evaporated. And you're right. It's very psychological. Some people, they eat a cake or they gain a pound and they start crying and whining about it. Just go work out and do extra rounds and put in the extra time and push through. Pay the debt. I pay the debt. That's how I see it. I'll pay the debt. Tonight I'll probably eat some junk. I don't know, you know. If I no. eat it, I'll pay the debt tomorrow. And that's the which I think you guys got to do. If you ate it, pay the debt, burn it off, put on extra extra rounds. And uh, I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't live without cheat meals once a week and process. I, I never cheat. Ever. <laughs> ever. Like, I'm not going to go out and cheat. Pizza, burgers. I'm not going to go out and cheat with Frost. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, burritos. Matt, how many, how many meals is there in a week, roughly? Dude, to cheat? No, no, no. Let's oh. see how many meals do we have in, in, in oh, a day. Like man. five meals a day. Four or five meals a day. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking at 35 meals a week? With snacks and all that. That's a lot of, that's a lot of food. It's a yeah, lot of meals. A ton. One, in, one or two is going to hurt that bad? Oh, yes. If, yeah. if, you know, here's the thing. You are not the average person. True. Average person that comes to me is like, I want to lose. You're, you're talking about somebody. Here's the thing. You're not in debt. I'm going back to finance. You're not in debt. Right, 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 right. Most people that come to me, they are like thousands of dollars in debt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're like, you know what, man? I'm going to pay. You, like the interest that they, they, they owe is ridiculous. And to, to get back on that interest, they need to go hardcore for a specific. Because here's the thing. 
not only you're not only like he just said psychological you're not just doing it when i do something for a long period of time i'm not only changing physiologically but i'm changing the habits i'm, I'm creating behavioral changes um, which makes things easier if i constantly have to think about drinking water like okay a gallon a day a gallon a day but what happens once it becomes habit then i'll have to think about it it's something that i do easily and then you know you kind of build off from there each each and every week so if i'm in debt you know like if i'm, I'm like you know, i want to lose 50 pounds or 100 pounds um i need to go a long time without that cheat meal i need to create those behavioral changes uh psychologically physiologically um and uh you know stick to a street diet if you're if like for us here you know the guy works out all the time he's like he's like but look at me at it the guy trains constantly he's not your average freaking person I guess that's yeah, I love true. It. <laughs> that is true. I guess that's true. I, I, I guess you're right. If you're a regular a sedentary person, you got to be very, very careful with how you eat. For the guy, for those of you who train a lot, like for, I, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. GSP. Yeah. We'll train. <laughs> we'll go to McDonald's. We'll eat whatever we want. The next day we're gonna train, and we won't do that every time. But we will work out so oh, much. Yeah. You will not. Get, like we won't gain a pound like we will not put on one pound but it's because the next day there's hours of training to do and then you know we go back to eating the more normal but if you're not if you're not that kind of if you're not, if you're not that type of motivated person you're, if you're very sed sedentary I guess you have to eat like you have to be very frugal a hundred percent so the best thing in my opinion train and eat what you want <laughs> train you know, once or twice a week train what you want don't live like a rabbit. That's just, that's just crazy. That's crazy. Yo, yeah. That's I'm, crazy. I'm Enjoy 100%. the food. Enjoy the food. Food is one of the best things in life. And pay your debts, I guess. I guess. Pay your debts. That's it. We're going to end on that note, guys. First, I want to thank George, number one. He's a, This guy has changed the way everybody cuts weight in UFC. Without a question, without a doubt. More than half the UFC champions are with him. Countless UFC fighters are with him. All my fighters are with him. His weight cutting program is absurd. But even better is the reload. After the weigh-in is done, how to put the weight back on is unbelievable. I've never seen anybody have a system like this. How can people reach you? Can regular, everyday people reach you? Yes, hundred percent. Like that's that's what. What, what do you have available for them? What can they do? If I'm a regular Joe, I train twice a week. I sit behind a desk, or I have another type of job, whatever. I need to lose weight. You have a website? Yes, it's fitnessvt.com right here. Fitnessvt. I'm gonna put it up on the screen, guys. It's gonna be in the description if you're not if you're not watching if you're watching this on your phone. What does Fitness VT do? Dude, it is it is a subscription based program where we create a program specifically generated for you. You guys, you know, whether you're trying to lose weight, gain weight, increase performance, obviously weight cut. We have fighters, we have stay at home moms, we got uh, business women, you got business men, you got you got all sorts Taylor of made diets for everybody. If you're sleeping a lot, not sleeping at all. Um, but if you're an athlete, especially you. get with George Lockhart. If you want to increase your performance immediately in the next month. You're working on them and, and you want to see an increase in your recovery and your energy levels, specifically the things you need to eat before and after practice that will, that will give you an increase in recovery and performance and, and health in general. Make sure you go see this man. What's your Twitter handle? If they want to see you on, find you on Twitter, social media, what do you got? Twitter is uh, LockLoaded and on uh, Instagram, it's uh, LockLoaded MMA. It's going to pop up on your screen. If you haven't seen it, it's because you're on your phone. It'll be in the description. How else can people reach you? Uh, hit me at george at fitnessvt.com um, and uh, you send me a shoot me an email um, like I work with I work with everybody and um, you know I'd love to like anybody that wants to work personally with me that's how they usually get a hold of me I'm trying to get him to do a YouTube channel guys make sure you <laughs> leave it in the comments that you want to see more of this guy weekly vlogs on how to eat how to train how to be lean how to make it happen for yourself this guy's got the knowledge Let's force it. I'm going to twist his arm, guys. <laughs> he gives us the knowledge <laughs> and shares it with us. Thank you all for watching. And special thank you to George. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.